Hi, this is episode four of Ruby's Garden Block of the Month from Vons and Porter. I am Jenny K. Parks. If you want to know more about me, you can check out my website, JennyKQuilts.com. But I'm sure you're here to learn more about this. The kit for this features Paintbrush Studios fabrics, 1930s, gorgeous, sweet, wonderful stuff. So today, now you're going to want to keep track of this one because we're going to cover a lot of details that you might not have touched on before. Today we're going to make folded flowers and then later on I'm going to show you how to do a bias cut and how to lay out some of the things for our inner applique border. So let's get started. First thing I'm going to start with is the flowers. You can, you absolutely have the option of doing this kind of applique flowers instead of the folded ones like I'm going to talk about. You have the option of doing this, that's perfectly fine. But you know what, I would encourage you just to even try these and you can decide. They give a really amazing dimension and it's fun and all the stuff comes with it, you know, when you get the kit. So give it a whirl, give it a try. So if you need a refresher on how to do this one, you can go back to video two and see how to do that one. But like I said, we're, we're gonna cover a lot of territory with this. So let's just buckle up. These are, you have the gathered petal flower, round petal flower, and the pointed petal, and of course, the little yo-yo. And these yo-yos be tiny, that's a tiny little yo-yo. We're gonna start first with the gathered petal flowers. All right, and I wanna to mention too, at this point, a little bit about thread, because you're gonna to have to do a lot of hand sewing with this, so I wanna talk about thread. Our inclination as quilters is to use 100% cotton thread 100% of the time. And I think you wanna avoid that with this. What I found is that because you have to pull your needle through so many layers, as you can see here, you have to pull it through so many layers that it can fray more often than it would on other applications. So I recommend not using 100% cotton thread. I recommend, of course, using a thread that's going to hide or blend. So that's a color that you want, like a light color, or you can see these were done with gray. Uh, so you want to use a color that would blend, but also that maybe is a poly cotton, a combination there, because that seems to be a little bit stronger. Like I said, you're going to have to pull, and you could get fraying, you could snap it. So just using the little stronger thread is going to give you better results. That's my suggestion. All right. So first we're going to thread up here. Now one way that I have learned to thread a needle without using any special tools or anything like that, I, I hook the thread over my finger, just like so. And then I'm going to take my needle, the eye, and for this you want a needle that's going to give you a decent size eye and that's going to be nice and strong, that's going to be able to force through the different layers, so just keep that in mind. Okay. So I've made a little tiny, tiny loop on the end of my needle. And I'm gonna pull my needle out and I still have a little tiny, tiny loop there. And it's made, so now it's the right size of my needle and I can push my, the eye of my needle down, wiggle it down there a little bit, and voila, voila, there it is. And then you can pull it through and thread it. I found this works great when I'm doing embroidery um, or trying to use yarn or, or whatever, whatever ones I'm trying to use here. Now, this is already started, so I'm gonna put the last one on and show you how to finish it, but this has a total of 10 petals. I'm gonna put, and there's nine on here right now, I'm gonna put number 10 on. Now, let me show you how to do this. You're gonna have your little form like so. And then you take the fabric and you're kinda of gonna fold the fabric in half. And then you're gonna snap a little form into place. Chink. So just a little snap like that. And um, you want to be sure you're not bunched up or have any extra folds that are tucked in here. You want to avoid that. Okay, now I'm going to trim it. I'm going to trim off this extra outer stuff because I just don't need it. And you can trim it pretty close to the edge like that. And I think, man, whoever thought of these, this is so clever, so clever. Okay, I'm going to start at number one, and then I'm going to move to number two, like that. What you want to see when you're doing this is, well, a couple things. You're going to have to make a lot of them. You want to develop a routine so that every time you do it, it looks the same, so that if you are doing it differently, you're kind of like, wait, that's wrong. That's not right. I need to figure out a different way. So this is the way that I decided to do it. You can try and see what works best for you. But you, you go in at number one here. So I'm coming out 
right there. And usually, I think, some, yeah, see it says start. Start, ha, huh, good clue. All right, so you push your needle in and the thread where it says start. And I'm gonna pull, and then come down at two. And it, it gets a little fiddly, you get stuff in your way, it's all right, you can work with it. Come up at three, down at four, and I'm gonna come up at five, and down at six, up at seven, yeah, follow along, I know you got it. And if you need to pull more thread, give yourself plenty of thread to work with when you're doing this. Um, and then down at eight. And you'll notice something on all these spots here, right? You just wanna see thread going across those open areas. You don't wanna see thread coming across here because then it's, it's not gonna work to pull it off. Open it up and everything will come out, voila. And I like to fold it once and twice. I already have an idea of how it's gonna fold. When you try out a few, you'll get an idea of, of which direction you need to fold it. And then I, I hold that securely and I'm just gonna pull my thread all the way through and it bunches up the stuff in the back. I'm sorry, technical term. It gathers up the stuff in the back and then you can pull it all the way to match up with this one. <gasps> Look at that, that is so easy. They're adorable, I love it. All right. Then what you want to do is you want to come over to your first one. So your first one, of course, when you start the very first one, you're going to make a knot. But like I said, give yourself plenty of string to, plenty of thread on there to work with, with all three of these that I show you. Plenty of thread. And now I'm going to come through my first one, and I'm going to go through the whole flower. You can see why you need a big, you need a strong needle to deal with this. I'm going to push it all the way through the flower, and your good thimble will be very helpful. And I'm just gonna pull around and this whole thing is gonna close. Now like I said, it'll take a little bit of fiddling. That's okay, that's all right. You can do it. There's a view kind of how it looks at the bottom. They're all snuggled in together. So I get to that point and then I'm gonna make a knot. And I'll show you the easiest way that I found to do a knot on this. So what I do is I take a little stitch like a sixteenth of an inch, just a tiny, tiny stitch in there. And I'm gonna pull, see I've got that little loop, and I'm just gonna go one, two, through that little loop, and then I pull that tight, and that seems to give me a really, a pretty good knot down there. Now, when you're, oh, probably not as snug as I want it, but you can get it snugger, you can do more. Um, so later on, you're gonna put the little yo-yos, I'll show you how to do the yo-yos, but you would stitch the yo-yo to the top there. And it, what, I, what I made sure to do when I was stitching the yo-yo, see I, I would stitch it on at this point when you still have this thread, just make sure you're catching a little bit of the yo-yo and a little bit of all of the different folds. And it works better if you go like from the top down and catch and then come back up instead of like a whip stitch. A whip stitch I found got it all messy and it didn't work well. Okay, so that is the gathered petal flower. Okay, so now we're gonna do the round petal flower. And this has, one, two, three, four, it has six petals on it, so we're gonna do one more here for you. Now this one, again, it, even though it's a different form, it's the same technique, right? We're just sewing by number. This would be a great uh, thing to have the kids or the grandkids, somebody that wants to learn how to quilt, to try these. It's, it's going to be fun, uh, pretty rewarding to do it. Oops, I got it kind of a little off center. There we go. All right. Oh, no, there. You do want to make sure, I'm having trouble with it now, that you get everything snug into there, into these corners, and that there's no, no folds. All right, just trim off the outside. This one's a little more awkward to trim, but we did it. Okay, 
Now again, same thing. We start at number one. It'll say start right there. Number two. And I like to keep the other flower hanging off of the edge here. It, that's as much out of your way as you could get it while you're working on this. This is also, this is a great take with you kind of project. You have to, you know, sit for a while, you have to watch the game or something like that. This is a great project to bring along for that. Okay, last one at eight. Then we remove our little form. Fold it. And then it kind of pooches up in the back. And folds, and I, I hold it loosely at this point because I want it to fold like it needs to fold. You know, I want it to fold the way that it's telling it to and not kind of smoosh it in a different way. And there we get that nice and secure. And then I would just bring it over to the other, the other end here and stitch it together to make the flower. All right, so there's that one. Oh. Thread left over. All right, so let me show you the five cornered flower here. I'm sorry, a pointed petal. It has five petals on it. And we're going to put the last little one. I think I, I like the, um, the gathered petal, but I think this is my favorite. For some reason, it just seems so sweet, so nice to me. All right, open up our mold again. And this one. It's in there like that. And I imagine you could also do it, um, actually, no, this, now that I'm doing this again, I remember that the, it, it folds up this direction. So you fold it and make a triangle instead of a rectangle when you fold it. Snap it into place. Make sure I don't have any extra folds in there. Trim off my outside. Thread up my needle again. You'll find and that's just such a handy trick. I really love it. It works just about all the time. So another thing you can encounter with this is that your thread tangles a lot. And there's some, there's like a thread heaven, I think is what it's called, and you can run your thread through that. That may make it better for you so it doesn't tangle if you find that happening. All right, so again, I have the petal off to the left. I'm gonna start at number one. And this one is kind of just big, long stretches. One to two. Three. What you have to be careful to do is get your hand out of the way underneath. You don't want to accidentally poke yourself there. I mean, not that I did, but just in case. I'm just warning you. <laughs> I was up at five, come down at six. And really, it just leaves a space for you to do that. And you don't have to worry about coming down exactly in the hole or be too paranoid about it because it's going to let you know. If the plastic's in the way, you can't push through there, and that's not where you're supposed to stitch. All right, I went down at eight and coming up at nine, 10, up to 11, and 12. Again, I think the greater minds than me thought this up, and I just think it's great. Remove our little mold, pop that out. All right, so I'm gonna take it and I'm just gonna kind of fold it in the direction holding it loosely in the direction it wants to go. And I'm gonna allow the string to make the folds. I'm not gonna worry too much about it. And you know what, if I didn't like the way it turned out, I can pull that one right off and do it again. Oh, look at that. So then I would just stitch through this one and put it together, lovely, lovely little flowers. Okay, so now we need to make the yo-yos to go in all the centers, right? Or you can make the yo-yos first, whichever, whichever's gonna make you happy. All right, so there's our little yo-yo fella. That's what we want to make. And granted, these are tiny. These are cute and little. I would not suggest cutting 
these down to the shape ahead of time, um, which you might be inclined to do, but I would not suggest doing that because what can happen is you don't have enough of a seam allowance on things. So let's see here, I'm gonna pop that in like that, and then I'm gonna put my mold in. And there's only certain ways that it'll pop in nicely. There we go. If you have it off, if you don't have the gears quite in the right place, it won't press down nicely. So you may need to check that. Now I'm gonna cut off a little bit beyond the mold. I mean, I just kind of, just kind of right there. And what I need to do is I need to make sure there's gonna be enough to fold down. So you don't wanna go too short. You wanna leave yourself a little wiggle room. Unlike the ones we did before where you could just cut right up next to the mold, you wanna leave just a little bit extra. Just a little bit. All right, oh, look at that, I got a crazy thing there. Don't need no crazy here, I already got plenty. <laughs> okay, now you want the thread. I'm just gonna use this good old fashioned thread. Thread my needle. And I'm gonna show you too how I make a knot on the end because I think it's a pretty good trick. What I do is I take the end of the thread and I wrap it around my finger and then I roll it off. And that can control, and it's, then I just pull, I can pull down, and that can control like, how many times I roll it, how big of a knot it's gonna make. I found that to be the easiest way for me, but you might have your own way that you like it and that's fine. Okay, I put a little tiny mark on here with my Sharpie I put a little tiny mark on there with my pen so that I would know this is the hole that I started in because sometimes the stuff can blend in and you can't see where you started. So I'll do that. I'm gonna start there. So you do the same procedure, but this time they're not numbered, right? And as I look here, I'm gonna go this way. That's the next one. So where, where there's the blank kind of loop, that's where you wanna make sure your thread goes through. And you want to make sure that on the back side, you're also catching some of the fabric, like so. And I'm going to work my way around. I'm going up and down. And each one, you see I come up, and there's a the space, right? And then down to the next one. These really come together pretty quickly, and they're quite cute. You can use lots of, lots of little bits, and that's kind of fun with them. You can think about making them bigger. You know, once you get a handle on this one, you can make larger ones if you want to. But it's a nice, way, nice fun way to use scraps. Use a little, uh, have a little variety in there if you want. Good creative opportunity. You know, you could also sew a little button down into these centers if you so desire. That's an option. Oh, I'm almost coming down to it, to the other hole, yay. All right, and now, so I can see my knot. I can also see the little black line where I started, and I wanna go one past that. Kind of a way to secure it and to pull everything. If you stop just at the knot, it, you don't pull up as well. All right, pop that little frame out. Gently pull this off of here. And then kind of with the same gentle hand that I was doing the other ones, I just kind of pull where the thread is and I'm gonna pull everything into place. And it takes a little fiddling. Sometimes you have to pull once or twice. There we go to get things exactly how you want them to be. Pull up in a nice, nice little circle for you. And then you would make a little knot and you'd be ready to go on, move on to the next part. So now we're gonna make our bias stems for the inner applique border. And usually I don't mess with bias. I try to avoid bias as much as I can. But here, we're gonna get it to work in our favor. And first we need to cut the bias stems. So. 
I have my strip here that I've cut according to the pattern dimensions. And now I'm going to turn it, I'm going to turn it at an angle because it's easier to cut at this angle. <clears throat> and what I want to do is um, I, I want to start with my bias, which is a 45. That's the 45 degree angle. See here on my ruler, I've got several places where it indicates that that's a 45 degree angle. Use that as your guide. And I am centered myself right in front because I think you get better cutting when I'm coming at it right in front here. Actually, let me shift it just a tiny bit more so I can come right at it. Remember, you don't have to contort yourself to fit the board. You can move the board, move things around to fit you. I have seen people take quite interesting dimensions as they're trying to cut something that's at a strange angle, but no, you don't have to do that. Okay, so here I have this, and I'm going to start here. And see, I have a 45 degree mark there, and you could use a 45 degree line on your mat to line it up to, whatever's going to work best for you to do that. So that's edge, and we, you can keep that, like that's desperation scrap, or you can do some of the leave applique that you need to do for this. You can do that on there. All right, so we just need a small bit here, one inch and one eighth. So I'm gonna line it up, and you notice I have my 45 degree mark up there on the top, so I have something that shows me I am at a 45 degree angle, and that's what I'm gonna maintain, because I don't wanna get wonky. I really want bias this time instead of no bias. Usually I fear the bias, but no, don't fear the bias. It's going to work in our favor here. And there's our little bias strip right there. Lovely. And you see it's got all that stretch to it, which is going to benefit us as we do that. So what you're going to do then is you're going to take this and you're just going to fold it, press it into thirds like so. So it's nice and pressed. If you need to use water to corral it or steam to make it um, lay flat for you, do that, but don't use starch because we want all the stretch that we can get. And you can even, if you like, press in a little curve in there. That's gonna benefit us when we put it, when we put it on the border. So let me show you that. Now I wanna show you this too, this is a this is my strong suggestion for everybody working on something. Make a practice block. Make a couple extra pieces, a couple extra stems, an extra flower, or whatever, so you can practice. You can test the thread. You can adjust the tension. Is that the right needle? What's going to work best in that? I always do a little practice block. Always, always, always. Because I don't want to make a mistake on my good stuff. I want to do it on a little practice scrap. So just keep that in mind. Good tip. <clears throat> Here is an example a partial part of our inner border. So you can see you're gonna do four segments like this and to put them all together, we can't have applique all of this down to begin with. So what I've done is I've just put them on for placement. Now this shows with the, with the applique flowers, but if you're using these guys, you can only pin them in place. You have to remove them when you're doing the quilting and everything. So like if you lay them out and then, and then take a picture with your phone or something, take a picture to refer back to it for reference, do that because you can't do all the work with these things high off of there and you certainly can't have it quilted or professionally quilted with that on there. Your long arm is gonna say, mm, I don't think so. <laughs> so you can see here's the rest of this border and that and I laid it out but I haven't put those together yet. And you can see, look at that, I got a nice curve in there. So what I did, I kind of laid the flowers, put the flowers over where the bias stems uh, come together. And that seemed to work pretty well. And then put the little flower, put the leaf, little leaf little fellas about halfway through that and put them in there. And you can see, I talked previously about monofilament. You can see how the monofilament just kind of blends right in and looks really nice. But again, you can use whatever technique you want to. So just be sure when you're laying this all out that you've put all four together and you know what you're gonna do, but don't applique these parts until after you've put it all together like this. Okay, so the next time we're gonna work on the center, the very center of it, the string star block, and I've got some good tips for you there, so be sure to join me.
This lesson of Ruby's Garden Block of the Month is brought to you by Paintbrush Studios, fabrics for your masterpiece.